so Bartan, please introduce yourself and we'll go from there. Bariga Lust, welcome. Uh, my name is Vartan Marashlian. Uh, I was born here but spent most of my life in Russia, uh, almost 30 years. Six years ago, moved back to Armenia and now I'm one of co-founders and executive director of Repet Armenia Foundation. Repet Armenia Foundation is a non-government organization which is aimed on uh, supporting brain gain repatriation to Armenia. So we work individually with any potential repatriates and help them with uh, integration, finding a job or setting up a business uh, and soft landing in, in a more general sense. Uh, and we also organize different forums in key diaspora communities to talk about repatriation, uh, but also about how today Armenians get be engaged with Armenia because this is very important. At the moment, uh, there's a very uh, we have a huge diaspora, but a lot of people has no real connection with the homeland. They've never visited Armenia, or they're just coming here as tourists. They are not engaged with any organizations such as those who are sitting here at Impact Hub, and uh, this is the first step. How that can help different people to find their way of connection with homeland. If I'm a businessman, I want to come here and do business. Uh, what would I do? Do I come and see you guys or somebody to help? Uh, if we talk about business, uh, the situation is as follows. I mean, we are an organization, but also a network of repatriates. So we have hundreds of repatriates around our organization who can become useful. If you come with a business idea, first of all, we are able to connect you with people who moved from other countries and are doing similar stuff in Armenia. So that you can have a very frank conversation. We definitely will warn you about the areas where it will be difficult to work or the competition is not there or they are monopolized. Uh, so we'll warn uh, what are the sectors where there are opportunities and what are the sectors with, where there's a very limited demand or there, there might be potential problems in, in doing work in Armenia. And as a second stage, we connect you with the professional legal accountants and consultancy companies to get information on what tax regime will be optimal for you or how to register a company. And as soon as you establish your own business or social project, we'll help you with promotion, uh, sending journalists, ma making media uh, co coverage, etc. So all our services are for free. That's one of the most important things which I would like to mention. Uh, we are a benevolent organization, so we have donations as an organization from different institutions and physical entities. So this is sort of like non -profit It's a non-profit organization. Very important to mention that we have 12 founders. Half of them are repatriates, half of them are diaspora Armenians. So basically, we're not talking about repatriation as a proper propaganda, but many of us has went through that process. And because we went through the process and saw quite a lot of difficulties, issues, we're now trying to make soft landing as smooth as possible. So is this any, uh, associated with any political groups? Things? No, not at all. Totally independent? Non-political, totally independent. Even if you look at the number of donors who support us, we have approximately 30 people in the organization supporting us. We don't have a major donor, so somebody who's kind of uh, having a big stake. Uh, so this is one of our <coughs> key principles. Can you say how many? Uh, can you say how many companies so far people came here and start, and how many success, how many failure? Um, it's a little bit difficult to judge about successes, failures, and numbers. I can mention how many people applied to repair to Armenia. We have approximately 500 applications per year. Uh, and we can divide those applicants into, into two groups. The first, those who moved already to Armenia and are trying to, f to find solution to the questions. But the second is those who potentially planning to move to Armenia. Of them. And so who was the brainchild of this whole thing? Uh, there is no one single brainchild. Oh, so it's kind yeah, of I think... Uh, must start with this idea. Well, we're talking about Impact Hub or Repet Armenia? If, if we to Armenia, I would say uh, when I moved to Armenia, uh, I knew quite a lot of repatriates and a lot of people were talking like we need to develop something, we need to 
create a website which will provide useful information for those who would like to do the same. Uh, and initially this pro process, uh, initial stage, lasted for approximately a year, year and a half. And we've started with an idea that we just need to create a website and ended up with the idea that we need an institution which is working individually with any potential repatriate. Do the government here work with you guys? Uh, we are in working relations with uh, those institutions who are interested in repatriation. Unfortunately, repatriation is not a part of agenda, of the real agenda at the government of Armenia, or even the opposition parties. If you take their agenda, you won't see repatriation. It's just during the recent couple of uh, years, the conversation which has been also initiated by us uh, is getting somehow to, to, to the point. But also the diaspora is not talking about repatriation. So I would say that we are in working relations with some of the government organizations, uh, some of the government agencies or uh, ministries, uh, and also with the diaspora organizations. So there's a way you guys know what, uh, what industry it requires or demand for it, so that, so that you, know, you would say, hey, come down here, there is demand for doing this, or? Uh, definitely yes, I mean, because we help with employment as well. We, for example, place, republish over 700 vacancies every year with a net salary over $500 in Armenia. So definitely there's a huge problem of unemployment in general, but uh, there are certain specific sectors where there's, a, there's good demand for specialists and there is big lack of professionals. Uh, the biggest one is IT sector. So, is that, yeah. What kind of, what, what area of IT? Developers. Developers. Uh, programmers. Uh, there's a lack of more than 1,000 specialists here. Uh, with salaries getting up to two, three thousand dollars net, That's at least, it's it's not it's not bad at all. I mean, if you look at the quality of life that you can afford here for for that salary, I think it's comparable to six, seven, or eight thousand uh, in the U.S. or some other countries. Um, it's definitely digital marketing, everything which is related to marketing, uh, finding the way to develop good products and to export those good products outside of Armenia. It's professional agriculture, it's touristic sector and hospitality sector in general, where there's big demand and good opportunities for those who can set up a hotel, hostel, can set up a travel agency, find new routes, find new markets. We have, for example, uh, a lady who she moved from uh, Russia and she, she's almost fluent in, in Chinese and she studied in, in China and lived there for a while. So she's now trying to concentrate and connect the big Chinese market to Armenia. I mean, if, 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 exactly. We have native Dutch speakers, Swedish speakers, Finnish speakers, those who move from those countries. So they definitely can be, can play that role of a connector. What was your background? Uh, well, I, uh, I I worked in different areas, so I'm, I'm economist by professional background. I uh, have, have a PhD at the Moscow State University and worked in the real estate development, banking sector in Russia, in international organizations. And also, uh, actually, in 2010, when I moved to Armenia, I was uh, I started working at the Ministry of Diaspora as a deputy minister, spent there two and a half years. Do, uh, that was the question. I, like, uh, I met her. Do they help? Do they help? Uh, really, uh, the name uh, represent anything? Like, do they help the diaspora here, or, or it's or they are limited? Um, well, I would say that the the Ministry of Diaspora. I think it's very important that it has been established. Definitely, this state diaspora relations should be top priority for us. But at the moment, we are still not there. So there's a number of very good programs which has been developed, but. Uh, I would say that the Ministry of Diaspora getting pretty scarce resources from the government to do what they are doing need really to concentrate more on very systemic specific issues rather than uh, try to cover everything and try to make as many possible projects and events here do, and worldwide. Do they have Ministry of Tourism here? Uh, no, there's no separate Ministry of Tourism but uh, it's a part of the Ministry of Economy and okay. now it will be renamed. Uh, but I'm sure with the new Prime Minister, the development of tourism will be one of the key sectors. Mm -hmm. So 
he's, he's making quite a change now, I would say. We have positive expectations. We hope that uh, a number of new people and you kind of blood a fresh look on how we can, uh, the government should actually act and uh, what should be done in economic, social and a couple of other spheres. Hopefully the policy will change. Today's headline was from him is uh, we're going to give the businesses breathing. As I mentioned, I mean, the problem with the business is not only about oligarchs, monopolies, and unfair trade or unfair economic relations. It's also about the lack of new ideas uh, in the society. So you will see that uh, a lot of new things which has been developed, startups, can be successful. But when people are permanently trying to repeat a specific thing which has been done for many times, for example, you'll see in Yerevan a lot of beauty salons, a lot of drugstores, yeah, a lot of... Uh, like so typical so restaurants so. where the service, uh, they're, they're not different in any way from others. So uh, there's a huge probability that they won't be able, to, they won't be successful. We need new ideas, people who can new develop and, need export. and connect Armenia with a bigger world. And I, I don't know why they don't take uh, seriously, more seriously, I'm sure they're doing with Iran because that's a huge market. And then lots of people here that like to just on a flight, one hour flight to Tehran, and I mean, uh, I'm sure they could find major. Uh, I know personally several groups, people, businessmen in the diaspora in Armenia who are now trying to focus on that. Because now Iran is getting more open to Europe and, and USA, and even from the point of view of living in Armenia, so for example, there will be expats who will be planning to open their businesses in Iran, but most probably they won't feel very comfortable to move their families to Iran. Maybe they will move their families to Yerevan and will travel from Yerevan to Tehran and back uh, several times per week. So I know that these ideas are in the air and hopefully with the new government and uh, there will be more serious discussion on how it will be able to do that, how it will be able to manage it. So do you, is there any uh, association or something for expatriate here, meet and talk and discuss uh, uh, issues and difficulties. As a part of things which we are doing, we are, as an organization, Repat Armenia, we are having regular informal meetings of repatriates. Uh, so we're doing it in different formats. The first is meet and greet, where we introduce a project, an interesting project or idea, and then have a chat, discussion, people know who, who is from which country and uh, which area is specialized. So we are helping them to connect with each other, but more importantly, we are helping them to connect with locals. We don't want ghettos to be developed in Armenia because some of the repatriates are coming with their own, let's say, uh, assumptions, ideas, and uh, because they're used to live in kind of diaspora world where they're a minority and trying to be together, they are trying to create small kind of a ghettos like Iranian Armenians with Iranian Armenians, American Armenians with Americans. That's so, uh, for another side, from another point of view, we are also trying to influence on the locals so that they are more open-minded, so that they are more, let's say, positive about people moving to Armenia. Because many of us has experienced this negativism from the first day when we moved. We've heard from taxi drivers and a lot of locals, relatives and friends that what, what are you doing here? I mean, we, we dream of leaving the country, you came to, to Armenia, uh, so leave Armenia. I mean, there is no way you can, will be able to reach anything here. So we need to work on both ends and we're trying to do our best. Yeah, those taxi drivers are, yeah, it's, it's, they're just too, too much negative. Sure. Anyways, that's, that's a different story, but yeah. Well, I'm really very happy to see all these things uh, going on, and I keep looking for some good news and stuff, and and um, so the diaspora would see it, they would see it, get encouraged, and maybe move here. I mean, really, I mean, I'm not doing any uh, overdoing it. It's a beautiful city to live in. That's nice, true. Easy life. You got everything. You have night life, day life. You know. All you need is some decent job or something. Yeah, I would completely agree with you because I lived in Moscow where it's a huge city. You don't have time to live. I mean, you, you actually spend most of your time driving from A to B and back yeah, in car. Yeah. 
or there are issues with the physical safety, or there are issues with keeping your children Armenians. I mean, they don't speak the language. Even I almost forgot the language during uh, 30, 30 years of living there. So uh, Armenia creates or provides opportunities, but at the moment it's not ready for mass repatriation. It's more ready for those who are able to come and create opportunities. Yes rather than those who would like to use the opportunities. Yeah. But at the same time, there's a very interesting infrastructure which has been developed even during the last six years which I'm here. So there are very good pre repatriation opportunities. You can do volunteering in Armenia. You can have an internship in Armenia. There's a brilliant programs, private ones and some even public ones, uh, where you can try and be connected with Armenia today. You can come and study here at the American University of Armenia at a very decent price and get a pretty good quality of education. And, and this uh, healthcare yeah. stuff, this is a really good tourist industry. Exactly. I mean, there are opportunities now and we are now, as a repat Armenia, not only concentrating on repatriation, but just on connection of any potential repatriate or, or any diaspora who is interested to like, find his own way with Armenia. Like I went to uh, Bangkok, you know, I, I bit like two suit and five pants for five hundred dollars. Why can't they do it here? Well, we have, for example, Syrian Armenians who produce shoes here already, shoes, yeah. or we sportswear, sports. and a couple of other things. Yeah. I think diaspora's role should be definitely not just complaining, not just saying that a lot of things are horrible here. Okay, okay, there are a lot of problems here, but be connector, help those who pr produce a lot of very good things that are produced in Armenia. Help them to expand. Help them with the export. Help them with bringing their products well, to the I countries. Mean, we, we need to look at what is, for example, in the U.S. Is they don't make anymore, what is here could be made and say that they are like clothing. I mean, perfect example. Tourists could come here and, and somebody in a hotel would direct them. Like that's how they do it in other countries. Right. They direct and they'll say, uh, hey, you use this, no, right. or this, so they take them there and, and show them like in Taipei, Taiwan. They have just one building like that. They call it Taipei Trade Center. They all like, like how you have small, small, small right. offices. They sell their products. So all you have to do is just go there, and then they take you to their manufacturing or whatever they do. So something trade center, you know. I mean, this is, just look like a trade center almost, you know. Yeah. And uh, so. I think it's a good idea. There should be people who concentrate on that and try to, to make it yeah, more professional. I think level. that's only one could do is government. People, it would be very hard to, it, you need a structure, you know, infrastructure to build. And then... I mean, coming from my experience, I would say that those type of things, innovative things, should be developed in the private sector. Well, I, but later on, you need to get the government as a supporter. And usually it works that way. When you create, for example, when we've established Repat Armenia, and we're talking about repatriation, a lot of people were showing like, are you crazy? What kind of re like repatriation? This is something which won't work. And now when we are pretty successful uh, in many communities here and here, people know the organization and we managed to raise the importance of repatriation today. It becomes part of the agenda. Uh, we have public and non-public institutions coming on to us and trying to, to establish partnerships with us. But things should be developed mostly in a, on, a, on the private side, because oh, in the government, and not only in Armenia, but in many other countries as well, there are two problems, like the vision and the capacity. You mean the people with ambition to, to start stuff. Um, so, so the reason I was asking, you know, like people get together because for, and I give you an example, I was talking to someone about wine export and they said, well, it's difficult because we make the wine here, but we need to bring, we import the bottle, we import the cap, we import this. And as a businessman, the first thing in my mind was, well, let's make the bottles here. here. Okay. Right? That's what it goes about. So we need people like immediately think, oh, you're making this, but this is your problem, that's all that To problem. create the whole chain so that... Yeah. And so, uh, so this is why I was talking like people when they get together and somebody's great in making wine, but somebody else could make that bottle, you know. And so there's just another field, you know. True. I'll just give you this as an example, but there is, 
thousands of things that are all related. There are a lot of things which can be done in Armenia, but we need more people. We really need more people well educated uh, with new ideas who would come to Armenia. Not necessarily live, let's say, 365 days per year. We have, by the way, f people and I have friends who live here one month, two months a year. They visit Armenia regularly and we also consider them repats because their core interest is Armenia. And they are trying to do their best to be helpful to Armenia but also to be Armenian, which for them means to be connected with homeland. But I honestly think they, there is somebody, some organization, private, public, they, their job should be, they wake up in the morning, they should know, oh, this activity is going here, this activity there, yep. put them on the list. So the people who come outside, they go and visit and see and, and utilize those things. There is no such a thing, you know. And I'm um, just repeating, taking to just tourists like going in funk, uh, you know, one time you come and do yeah. it, twice you do it. But I agree. We actually started that process. We're now in negotiation with over 10 organizations to start so-called Armenian Now platform, which will unite information about all those interesting initiatives in Armenia and to combine our efforts in promoting that information both in Armenia and the diaspora. So hopefully in a half year's time when we talk next time, so next uh, you'll, year see, come, you'll see uh, concrete not? changes in that area as well. Okay, that'd be great. All right, well, uh, thank you very much. I appreciate you letting us come here. Thank you very much for coming yeah. to